Good morning, Shana Tova and Gamar Khatima Tova. This morning we begin our service by searching the hearts of our rabbis and cantors. Gentlemen, good morning. Shana Tova. Gamar Khatima Tova. Uh, Rabbi Noah, as you begin to pray, what do you bring with you to your prayers? What goes through your mind as you pray? The first thing that goes through my mind is what a burden. What a heavy weight to carry for a community. To try to craft an experience that I'm part of and leading, but also creating a container for everyone to experience their own sense of awe and transformation. So the first thing that I try to do um, before I start Kol Nidre or before I go into Yom Kippur, especially in the morning, is I take a couple minutes of quiet and I try to clear my mind. And I've already run through the paces of which pages to turn and what the next cue is. And I try to then get all of that out of my mind and say, what is the transformation that I'm trying to achieve for myself and for my family and for community? And then when that first music opens and that the arc opens and the voices rise, I try to find myself in that place. That it's not a fiction. It's not a story that we're just making up. This is real. This moment of transfer transformation is possible. And I can stand there with you. I can stand there with my family. And I believe that I can move from the past to the future. Noah, you were a naval officer and a chaplain in the Gulf after Hurricane Katrina. We're experiencing so many catastrophes now. What do you know, what can you share with us about responding to catastrophe with prayer? So I look out at the world today and I think about the wildfires that's out there. I think about all the social unrest. And what, when I remember from that time, which I think is helpful for us today, and which I think makes the prayers alive for us, is that when you read a piece of poetry or you read a piece of literature and you think about like who by fire and who by water, the answer is us. It's all of us. And it might not be this year for them, but it's this year for me. And it might not be next year for me, but it's next year for someone else. And so when I think about how trauma, the experience of loss, the experience of pain, the experience of destruction, the experience of anxiety, depression, and fear of the future that just floods our consciousness in the face of disaster. We find solace in the truth-telling of our prayers, of when we bring to the surface our deepest pain, our deepest shame, and our deepest hopes and desires. That prayer is so beautiful, the Unitana Toka, because it ends on a positive note. It says life is hard, really, really hard. But if we respond to the hardness with softness, with love, with repair, with chuva, if you respond with reflection and dreaming of a future through tefillah, and if you respond by looking at the systems of the world and trying to figure out how to make them more just and more kind through tzedakah, we can respond to these disasters, whether it was a hurricane years ago, or fires today, or whatever the next disaster is going to be. And we can respond by building the world, a world that we want to dream of, and the world that God dreams of for us.
No, you, you of course know the story of Franz Rosenzweig, the great 20th century philosopher, who came to a synagogue on Yom Kippur Eve on the night before he was ready to leave the Jewish people, and something happened to him and he became a great Jewish thinker and leader. When you speak to that searching young person, sitting in the very last row of the synagogue, what do you want to say to that person? I love that story about Franz Rosenzweig and Yom Kippur. But there's the part of the story that, that's kind of off the page that we never really talk about, which was that uh, when Rosenzweig went into that synagogue, he chose to go into that synagogue. He could have just kept walking. He could have just gone down to uh, the coffee shop uh, and to debate philosophy with his good friends, but he chose, something in him cho made him, compelled him inside his heart to go into the congregation and to open. And that's the number one choice I think anyone in this world has to make. Is your heart open for growth? Is your mind open for learning? Is your soul open for, for, for growing and for dreaming? And if you allow yourself to enter that space, a space where love is real, and fear is real, and miracles can be real, and dreams can be realized, and pain can be repaired, and sadness can be let go of. If you choose a world, and you choose a life where spirit is possible, then you cannot help but be overwhelmed in a positive way by this day, this day of amazing and awesome majesty, this day of repair of relationships, and this day where we can begin to fashion the future for ourselves. And so if you're sitting in that back row, or in this case, you're sitting on a couch or in a coffee shop, or if you're sitting in a, in a, in a, on a parking lot somewhere, if you're sitting on the beach, wherever you are in the world, the goal for today is to suspend your cynicism for just one day. Suspend your skepticism. Suspend that biting, critical uh, aspect of who you are and allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to grow. Allow your spirit to rise so that when we get to Ni'ila at the end of this day when it's dark out and you hear that shofar, what you're actually hearing is the call of tomorrow to our better selves. Noah, what do you break fast on at the end of the holiday? My favorite breakfast food since I was a kid has always been a fat bagel with cream cheese and lox. I, there are people who love kugel. There are people who love blintzes. There are people in our congregation who will eat tariq, and there are people who are going to eat choresh, and there's going to be people who eat all sorts of different food. There are pe people who love to drink whiskey. That's not for me, at least not on breakfast. It is a big bagel smeared with cream cheese, cucumber, lox, and maybe a little red onion because my breath already smells bad, so why not? And because nothing says repentance and the new year like smoked fish. Thanks, Noah.